for allowing me to be with you here today. With this talk, I'd like to invite you to reimagine what content could mean as virtual reality is finally becoming a reality. The digital world will soon enough be enmeshed with the physical world in such a way that our reality will be the transparency mode that we choose. The advent of digital realities is an opportunity for us to reimagine the way we could experience information. The future of immersive media technology is the future of computation. We are leaving the glowing rectangular screens behind and stepping into computational space where the world is our desktop. Virtual, augmented and mixed reality technologies will very likely change everything that we do as we do today and much more that we are yet unable to imagine. Virtual, augmented and mixed reality technologies in the context of breakthroughs in neuroscience and artificial intelligence, the bleeding edge developments in VR, MR, and AR, I want to invite you to think of all the ways we could be acquiring knowledge fast forward five to 10 years. As we go into this future without screens, we must pay attention to the context that our innovations shall be set in. We have been witnessing loudest voices on the internet, in the media and politics, screaming alienation versus communication, enclosure versus openness, and fear versus curiosity. In the light of recent events, I cannot help but admit I have been somewhat troubled by how narrowly we have been approaching our work, even we, even this very group of people that calls themselves dreamers and explorers. Our work is never just entertainment or marketing or science or technology. We are, in fact, creating culture. More than ever before, we must think what ideologies the technologies we develop could facilitate. More than ever before, we must think what behavior the content we create could enable. Sana Salem wrote, there are no answers, only choices. So what are the choices we want to make? What if instead of following the future, we go and build one? We all heard a saying that greatest science fiction is less about extravagant dives in the future and more about bringing our attention in the most efficient of the roundabout ways to the choices we are making today. What made me fall for virtual reality is that it could give us that necessary distance to engage with our physical reality in a more open way. By understanding what we desire and fear in the virtual worlds, we could learn a whole lot about how our behavior in a physical world. VR could be the proxy for us to visualize, experience and interact with complexities of the physical reality in a new way. Here are some vital questions to ask. How much of the physical world do we want to be changed, modified or replaced with the digital? How much of our data will we be willing to surrender to the providers of digital worlds? We need to look no further than Charlie Brooker's Black Mirror or Keiichi Mitsuda's Hyper Reality to see the prototypes of the future where the merger of physical and digital space goes terribly wrong. These are important cautionary tales and really digging to understand what, why and how things could go wrong is the only way to do it right. The urgency to do it more right than wrong is real. Unintended consequences of these new technologies could wreak havoc more severe and more widespread than we care to admit. The election of the most unstable man to hold the most powerful post in the world's number one democracy has very much been aided by tech and media platforms that were initially intended to connect and not divide us, to expand our knowledge of the world and not create the post-fact nightmarish micro-worlds. In a fractured, distrustful society the aforementioned tech and media companies have enabled, we are the ones that will pay the price. I might come across as overly critical, but the last thing I want to be is a naysayer. I believe that we are, in fact, in the beginning of a beginning of a technology that could be indistinguishable from magic. But only, only if we choose it to be so. The technological progress is unstoppable, and we have little other choice than to embrace it. But we should not be embracing it blindly. If the intellect is the fuel of our rocket engine, the vision is the direction our rocket shall fly. Technological innovation without humanitarian evolution equals dystopian future, or shall I say, dystopian present? I had the chance to work with both John on the Cuffler and Alex McDowell, who have created the tech concept and production design of Minority Report. They have achieved the dream of so many of us, prototyping the future. The only problem with that is that the future they prototyped was a surveillance state dystopia. 
Media is the modern day mythology. It lays the foundations of our civilization and becomes the ideology upon which we build our societal values and inform our policies for generations to come. A blockbuster superhero figure saving alone the world is what paves the path for Donald Trump saying that he and only he alone can save America. Ideas have impact. How we speak matters, how we see matters. In fact, it all starts with how we see the world. Media we create becomes us. Spaces we design become us. The fiction we tell, if it is compelling at all, bleeds back into reality. So I want to invite you to see the future as a possibility space of creating together. Together as collaborative entities of humans, but also as collaborative entities of human and machine intelligence. Here, I'd like to quote my personal hero, Audrey Tang. And this poem of hers for me seems very much like the one manifesto we could use for a kinder future. When we see internet of things, let's make it an internet of beings. When we see virtual reality, let's make it a shared reality. When we see machine learning, let's make it collaborative learning. When we see user experience, let's make it about human experience. When we hear the singularity is near, let us remember the plurality is here. We need more stories of plurality. We need more platforms for inclusion. We need more technologies for collaboration. In fact, how can we embed collaboration in the very essence of things we design? I want you to think how we could shift the conversation from virtual reality being the isolation space to virtual reality being the resistance space. Because we will have to find new ways to resist the borders that are being imposed on us. As the men in ill-fitted suits want to build walls, we, we must build bridges. I want you to think of VR as the most amazing medium and tool we have ever had to facilitate understanding, learning, connecting with each other across and beyond these borders. Virtual reality is a space that can manifest its full potential only if we all come together and work together for the shared goal. The reason there is little truly extraordinary AR, MR or VR content is because we are all still working in boxes. Engineers with engineers, game people with game people, directors with their producers and artists with artists. To create something truly new in this space, we need to step out of our echo chambers. We need to open our imagination, convert it to conversations, to collaborations, creating outcomes of transformation. We are held back not as much by early stage tech, but by our lack of imagination, by our unwillingness to have a conversation outside our comfort zone, and our inability to really collaborate across cultures, disciplines, and generations. Too often we reach for the low-hanging fruit, even while being aware that that could very possibly hurt the medium long-term. In fact, our short-term goals might kill our vision. We cannot continue dragging the old media into the new medium, even less we should be transposing the old bad habits into this new space. We have to shift our thinking from creating within the frame that the screens wear to the content that is the space we move through and interact with. Screens had to compete with all other distractions in our physical space, and we compensated for that distance with all the extra stuff that would terrify us in real life. The insanely fast pace, violent action, exaggerated visual effects. But what does it mean now that we won't be watching it anymore, but actually being in it? It is not anymore about suspension of disbelief, it is about belief. Virtual reality is a space that requires trust. My friend Elon Rudberg once said, you don't, oft, not, you don't even notice your subconscious mind until you get scared or horny. Inherited wounds are the background radiation of our lives. VR viscerally taps into all that we are, including our personal histories. When we experience digital space, just like with physical space, we come with all of our subconscious trauma that more often than not, we aren't even aware of. It is easiest to achieve emotional reactions by triggering our fears. That's why we've been seeing so much of violence and horror-based VR experiences. YouTube is full of people freaking out, being attacked by virtual zombies. Sure, that seems funny, until it happens to you. 
We will witness their real PTSD to the virtual experiences. We will see people harmed, crippled, terrified by physical experiences that did not happen to their physical bodies at all. If the experience is virtual, the fear is really real. Is the experience just virtual? If the fear is real? In 90% of VR I have tried, I have been made to move through the space by cheap claustrophobic tricks. Space, action or time closing in on me. If the only way you can motivate my actions is by threatening me death, then the current version of this medium suffers from a serious case of arrested development. I invite you to support media and technology that will help us opening up, not continue closing us down. My creative partner Howard Goldcran asks, how could we design future as a compassionate, collaborative network? All this might seem a daunting task today, I know, but if not us, then who? And if not now, then when? In every talk that I do, my main goal is to remind you of the awesome and awesomely terrifying power of content. I want you to think how the content that we create could help us to move past the outdated, ossified structures of the existing society and visualize the more inspiring world that tomorrow could be. I want you to think of how the new infrastructures we design could enable the new participatory story world. Throughout my life, I have moved from creating still images to moving images to immersive spaces. And what I have seen all across is not the discontinuity in the medium, but a continuum of human experience. What you make me feel much more than what you make. Alicia Naples, who led the design of UI and UX at Magic Leap says, do not make something about something. Make something that actually is something. The more I work in a field, the more I realize that there isn't really such thing as grammar of virtual reality. We are trying to establish format compatibilities and certain rules of engagement, of interaction. But the bigger question here is, how do we craft reality situations? And I believe number one rule for creating good virtual reality content is actually engaging with our physical reality. Observing what makes us react to physical experiences, how we move through physical space, how we interact with physical objects will get us thinking wiser how the laws of this interaction could be bent and open to an even wider array in the digital space. It's not as much about what you designed, but what we can do and how we feel in your design. It's not as much about your subject matter, but how you approach it. In a way, to be as good as we dream it to be, the technology has to become transparent. Bruce Sterling says, we can no longer allow ourselves to be hypnotized by the sense of technical novelty. We should look at it like it is already passe and create it from that point of view. It must be good without us considering that it is new. If we experience it as only good because it is new, it will not be good for long. Innovation is not a gadget. We do not have technology problem. Accuracy is not the only measure of quality. In volumetric VR space, most seem to be pursing the pixel-perfect recreation of reality. That is what we need, but it's not what we solely need, and certainly not what we need most. It's how you are connecting me to your created reality in a virtual space. It is indeed vital that more time, energy, and resources go to the R&D of content. Because VR is not hardware. VR is not platforms. VR is an experience. VR is a digital space that you step out of with physical memories. VR is a journey leading ultimately into experiencing your own inner space. And VR is not new. It is technology finally coming together for something that the shamans of time immemorial have been bringing us into through their sacred rituals. Rituals that, since the inception, have had a goal of teaching us how to dive deeper into the parts of our psyche unknown to our conscious minds, so we can learn how to come closer to the world that we are inextricably linked with. I know this might seem somewhat esoteric, but that's what being in a space, knowing that that space is not there, very much is. More than ever before, creation, be it artistic, scientific, or technological, needs to have some of that shamanism within it. I dream of technology that could help us heal our wounds as individuals, as cultures, 
as societies. Our technology should not just be about solving practical problems. Greatest inventions inspire us to invent more. Greatest innovation of tomorrow would be about inspiring us to connect deeper with each other. Creativity is not about devising smarter ways of selling more things people do not need. Creativity is about creating moments of unique experience. Experience that expands the human potential creatively, emotionally, intellectually, physically. What we need more than anything for the long-term future to be a more inhabitable place to live in is infrastructures and tools that allow us to be creative with our own lives. What we need is not more technology-driven experiences, but experience-driven technology. We want technology that supports us in becoming the best version of ourselves. We want technology that can take us further beyond our physical bodies so that we can bring back the digital possibilities space into our physical lives. Now is the future. Every day with everything that we do, we are creating the culture of the future that we and everyone else will be inhabiting. If I can leave you with one and only one question, it is, what is the future reality that you want to create? Thank you.